So let's see if Dwayne Carter gets off clean. <laughs> he does. That's a, good, that's a good run right there. I'll give you an idea of the top interior defensive lineman, the numbers. So if you look at sacks, uh, the top 10 interior D linemen and sacks last year, their average when you look at their combine numbers was a 17210, which is exactly what we around. just saw there okay. with a 49140. We'll make your announcement off of that. Is that cool? Next up, Mississippi State's Jaden Crumedy. The average size of those top 10 guys, 6'3 and 5'8, 299 pounds. So just to give you some context as these guys get up to the line and get ready to roll. Cromedy tonight, huh? 1.69 10 yard split. Five flat overall. Chris Rose and Charles Davis are manning the fort on our concourse set. Happy combine, gentlemen. Happy combine to you, Rich Eisen. Charles Davis, were you DB 34 in 1987? What were you? I don't know what the exact number was, but if you ranked me, it'd be DB. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Higher than that. And the that. number keeps going. Uh, Charles, you participate in this event. You have covered it uh, for many, many years, and now you call games on Sunday yeah. alongside our friend Ian Eagle. So why is this important to you? Well, it's important to me because as you evaluate these youngsters, it's much more confirmation because if I see these guys and I like what I see, they come here and they confirm it by what they're doing out on the field, by their running, their jumping, et cetera. And it also causes questions for me because I may like what I've seen throughout the year. Then they come here, they don't have a great combine, and I have questions, which means I'm back in the tape, asking for questions, finding out what it was and what went wrong. I always think about Joe Hayden. Had a terrible combine here. Went back, cleaned it up at Florida. Was a first-round pick, an all-pro player. Had a terrific career. Uh, a couple of names you're keeping your eye on here with these groups. Well, let's start with steady improvement. We already saw Dwayne Carter from Duke. Got better each and every year while he was at Duke. He's a heck of a player. Let's talk about bloodlines. Jonah Ellis out of Utah. Ended up going from three sacks to 12 sacks his last year at Utah. How about go, if somebody was a project? Jalex Hunt out of Houston Christian. A safety at Cornell. Played 17 games there. One start his last couple of years, 13 and a half sacks at Houston Christian. Finally, emergence, Braden Fisk out of Florida mm -hmm. State. 33 and a half on the, on the uh, vertical and nine foot nine on the broad jump. The best in group ones thus, thus far. Uh, Peter Schrager from Good Morning Football will be joining us Friday and then throughout the weekend. And this morning on Good Morning Football, he said one name to keep your eye on, Rook. A row, row, row. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, it, it might be the name of the entire combine. You'll see him participate a little bit later on. three rows. Yes. Three rows. Three. Yes. Three. And welcome back to the Combine, Jim Harbaugh. And apparently it's Spring Your Son to Work Day, which I like as well. It's good to see him back out here. And he's got the stopwatch in hand as well. Checking out uh, Brandon he's Dorbis. He's raising him right. Of Oregon. Toeing the line, Rich Eisen. Yes, indeed. It's always a family affair with the Harbaugh's. <laughs> so here's Brandon Dorless. Brandon Dorless, a little bit of a tweener, kind of wondering, is he going to play outside? Is he going to play inside? That's a great 10 split for somebody who's on the interior and a great mm. 40 time. Um, they'll stand him up on the edge. Then he'll slide inside as well and rush inside. He's working out with these DTs. Um, but he flashes when you watch him. He's a total flash player. <laughs> and you see some. That was of, a flash right that there. That was a good flash I mean, right dude, there. The guy's almost 300 pounds and he ran a 485. That's rolling. 40. Now here's Justin e. Boyd B of Alabama football. DL5. He had to play as a freshman, and he, you know, they weren't anticipating having to throw him out there right away. And they'll tell you, look, he got his butt kicked a little bit that first year, but he proved how tough he was and how competitive he was and just kept getting better uh, during his time there at Alabama. Five one eight with a one eight one split, and again, ten yard split. This is these are guys that you're gonna need to see burst and energy from in a much smaller piece of real estate than forty yards. Yeah, we, we got to get why. out. And we'll be seeing that ten yard split on Sunday again when the offensive linemen finish up. Now here is the forty fifth best prospect on your top fifty. Braden Fisk of Florida State. Uh, he's jumped really well, as Charles mentioned. 
I think he's going to roll here. I mean, he is explosive, and you can see it on tape with him. I mean, he jumps off the ball. He can win early. He's got really strong hands. I was impressed, impressed with his balance. And somebody who doesn't have long arms, he's got shorter arms, but he doesn't allow blockers to get into his chest. He's able to just work edges and win. I think he's going to roll here. Nice. He's, he's moving. One, six, eight. Oh, yeah. Oh. Four, seven, eight. Hey, now. I think he knew he did well. I think he said, oh, yeah, as he crossed the finish, didn't he? Did I hear that properly? That was strong. Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah. Do do bow bow do 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 bow bow. He knows it. If the next one, if he says chicka chicka, <laughs> nice. we know we've really got something going. <laughs> well, that's in Illinois, right? That's Whew. that's a little bit of Ferris Bueller. <laughs> that's a good pull. Here's Gabe Hall of Baylor. He's a good athlete, too. CD, big Gabe Hall. We saw him at the Senior Bowl that first day. Nobody blocked him. Yeah, no doubt about it. The movement that we saw was part of what we were looking for. And you remember going into the evaluation, DJ, how many coaches did you talk to or, or scouts that said, really like what he does, but didn't find the football real well. He found the football in Mobile all week. Yeah, in my notes on him, I wrote down Michael Phelps because it was all swim moves. I mean, he, <laughs> it, it, nice. it is his go-to. <laughs> nice. Marcus Harris of Auburn. He is really good on games. When you run twists and games, that's where he's at his best. <laughs> solid, solid 10 time. Steven Jones. Do you think the Cowboys need an interior defensive lineman? Um, <laughs> I mean, they, you might have them at the top of the list of teams that need that. Yeah, that's uh, that's an area of focus. Here's McKinley Jackson of Texas A&M. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, I mean, if you name a team that's coming into the combine keenly interested in somebody that can stop the run in the middle of their defensive line while go hunting, it's the Dallas Cowboys. His, his Aggie runs a 178, 10 yard split. Now, here we go. We have the first of 18 Michigan Wolverines here at the Combine. That's an all time record for a single school, and it's only fitting that Chris Jenkins is the first that we see because you want to talk about leaders and best. This kid is exactly that and was exactly that over this run over the last few years of the national champions of this past season. And he is a physical freak. When your nickname is the mutant, uh, that means you're pretty darn athletic. And at his size, you're going to see him move really, really well. And off he goes. I think he can run even better than that. Well, he's got a second run to come. And in case that name might sound familiar to you, yes, his dad, Chris Jenkins, is the Chris Jenkins that played for the Panthers and the Jets. To show you what you missed while we were paying some bills, Logan Lee of Iowa. Solid time. And then Zion Loga of Georgia. Not a ton of production, but somebody that's got a little upside to him. And everybody, get your stopwatches ready for Byron Murphy. Yeah, he's scooting. Yeah, there you go. You know, you were. We, you and I were having a conversation during the commercial break, and you were like, hold on a second, as he was running. <laughs> Miles Murphy of North Carolina. This has been a fast group overall. Move head. And here is Rook Ororo. He yeah, he's rolling. Ororo. Yes, he is. Doinks. <laughs> One, six, seven, ten yard split, and a four, nine flat. That was impressive. At 6'4", 294 pounds. Come on. That's nuts. Keith Randolph Jr. Of 
of Illinois. Hey, man, they've had some talent on defense the last two years coming out of Illinois. Witherspoon, Ooh. back end, right? They've had a couple DBs come out of there and the twins. Yeah, they've. There you go. Seven nine. And they're all physical, tough, tough kids. Stacy Dales. Rich, we just watched Texas D tackle Byron Murphy run that 488. He is so happy down here on the field. He told me this week he he was aiming for a 4849, so right on target there. But I can't wait for the drill work, guys, because the thing he most wants to impress with this week is how violently he hits the bags. His change of direction and quickness, he's a real good one. He's got excellent leverage too, Stacy. Unbelievable leverage. He'll go down to a knee when he's taken on blocks and somehow has the torque and power to be able to withstand double teams. It's impressive. Now let's use Mason Smith as we're getting through the first leg of the 40s. Again, everyone gets a second shot at it if they'd like. Mason Smith's an interesting one. Big time, big time recruit coming out and uh, was impressive his first year, then got hurt and still has been recovering from that. But you could tell by his big frame, he's uh, he's got a lot to work with. He's speaking of big men. Yes. the. Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. The last time a Texas Longhorn could be called that. I think they moved to the this SEC. Pretty sure you're going to get uh, simul cam right here, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's already being queued up in the truck. Is that right? <laughs> Warren, again, I love mentioning SAP. Warren always referred to those fellas who might be larger in stature and slow, considered as pace cars for me <laughs> in my 40 yard. But this kid is that's a big man. 366 currently the fourth heaviest player at this combine. He just walks centers back. I mean he just gets into him and walks him right back to the quarterback. Makes sense. Leonard Taylor from the U. Ian Rappaport. Good combine to you sir. To you too, Rich. A lot to tie together here. We'll start with it. You guys have had a lot of Illinois talk. We'll stay on that for a second. Johnny Newton, the standout Illinois defensive tackle, the reigning defensive player of the year in his conference is not going to participate. He is an Indy, but not participating today because of a Jones fracture. Now, this was a fracture kind of near his pinky toe that he suffered during the season played through it, opted for surgery after the season. Sounds like it's going fine, expected to run at Illinois Pro Day, but obviously not going to risk it today. The number 28 overall player on DJ's list. And then you mentioned Trevante Sweat, the weight. Yes, it's a little weird to talk about a dude's weight, but he did not weigh in at the senior ball. I don't think he really wanted the weight to be a big topic of conversation. A lot of scouts were curious. How big was he actually going to be today? Listed at 365, they're like, no way. Well, he weighed 366. That, above all else, was probably the biggest news here for him in Indy. Thanks, Ian. Greatly appreciate it. While Ian was delivering his report, um, Kai Wingo certainly ran a very nice 40. <laughs> he is a good player. And you see that twitch when you watch him there at LSU. Real, real explosive and, and slippery as a rusher. But that is an outstanding time. One of a, about a handful of incredible times we saw in that first group. That's Monty Austin Ford, the general manager of the Arizona Cardinals. Fourth overall, the Arizona Cardinals this past week on, uh, on the old social media. Got a lot of people talking because they were just sending out collages of Kyler Murray saying he's our yeah, franchise quarterback. And that bucket, that hole right As there. As if I, was I, I was doubting. Yeah, I, don't, I wasn't doubting. Everyone's that. wondering, yeah. like, okay, yeah. that's that's great. Good enough. What do you think he's lobbying for with that fourth pick? I don't know. I guess I'd be a it's guy. Well, it's entirely possible the, the first three teams choose quarterbacks, leaving right. Marvin Harrison Jr. for him. And Kyler Murray would be very happy about that, I imagine. Some similarities when I watched Marvin Harrison Jr. were to Larry Fitzgerald, so that would be ironic if he ended up as a Cardinal. Sure. Obviously, his dad's name is in the Ring of Honor here. Right in the middle, right across from us in the 50. Get a Wayne chance. Carter has been whistled a lot so far today. There's Brian Gutekunst, the general manager of the Green Bay Packers. What a terrific season this year. I know they didn't. They didn't have the ultimate result that they hoped, as everyone wants to win a Super they Bowl. They are but young and talented. They though. sure are. And how 
Jordan Love played this year is beyond if anybody is still was still criticizing that just a, a vindication of the long term plan of the Green Bay Packers coming home to roost again. Turns out patience uh, is still rewarded in the NFL. And we'll have that conversation about this year's quarterback class if there's any reason to go draft one and hold. Dwayne Carter looks like a he looked like he got out a little better a little bit. Well, one one hundredth of a second. Is it, <laughs> little. I think the very definition. A of little, a little better. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, Mississippi State fans, when we showed a bulldog going to break, I said you should show it when Georgia's up there. We should <laughs> show the dog when someone like Jaden Crumedy that's been on sub five. That's been like de-tackle you when you think about all the guys they've had come oh, out of sure. there. A bunch of them. Fletcher Cox and Tyler Davis ran this 40 while we were in commercial break from Clemson. <laughs> he could not improve his time. Pretty much the same. All right. Brandon Dorless of Oregon. Could he improve yeah, his fluid. time of four, five, four, eight, five, four, nine, one, but still highly impressive. He's cruising. And we're back live now with Justin E. Boydby of Alabama. Five one eight was his first time. Those are uh, everyone unofficial. It's kind of like the yellow line on the screen during a football game. They're unofficial. The official times will come out at some point. Obviously, we will bring them to you. But right now, Braden Fisk stands alone. He's clocked him at a sub four eight. There's a boy beat. And he uh, could not better his first time according to our unofficial time. Joining us here from the New Orleans Saints, 14 years into this league, 117 and a half sacks, one of the best in the business, and thrilled to have joining us here once again, Cameron Jordan. Good to see you, sir. How are you from the New Orleans good Saints? You, that 117, I'm just hearing it, feels good. And a half. Don't stroke yourself half. that half. Feels good. Yeah, top, what, 30? Two thirty-five. Oh, now you're getting. Now, now you're asking me uh, questions. I don't know the answer. I do. Jack Android. You, Probably thirty-two. Can you give me the answer? Is it thirty-two? Okay, mm. we're going to get that answer for you. Not that I know. I'm going to trust him on that, that on, on that knowledge right there. <laughs> Here's Braden Fisk, who when he crossed the finish line, set running four seven eight. Went. Oh yeah. We overheard him say that. Let's see if he does something like that right now. He's going. Oh, big explosive, oh, baby. Okay. 481, you shorted yourself. You're 23rd all time. Whoa! 23rd. So it's the reverse. Under yeah. promise, over deliver. Nicely That's done. That's right. Yeah. Top Get 25 yourself. feels even better. Fans were, uh, what, what's your recollection of the combine? Man. When you went through it? Uh, in my mind, I, I was like prime. You know, I walked in, I ran my 40, I knew it was a hot time, I got out of there. But uh, in reality, I think I did everything. You know, I didn't, I don't think I felt like I, I wanted to escape anything. There was a great group of guys I was with. Uh, all through, you know, training for the combine. So you get there, you really just want to show off. Yeah. It's like a pony show. How were your interviews? You really just want to show off through and through. You no, know, but, like, but, like, did you come out of the room with the Saints going, I, I nailed that, they're going to take me? I mean, did you think, did you know that? Uh, they were 24th at the time. I didn't think I was going to fall that far. Got it. You know, that was that was a time where I, I, I had my eyes set on, like, top 15-ish. Yeah. And then, you know, things happen and you fell out. I I had an interview with the Saints, and they're like, we're not sure why you're here. And I was like, me neither. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Absolutely. My dog, uh, my, my D-line coach at the time, Bill Johnson, was like, hey, man, would love for you to be there, but you won't be. And I was like, yeah, I won't. Yeah, I will. But your class was loaded, man. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. You know, J.J. Watt, Ryan Kerrigan, uh, Cam Hayward, myself. Mm, there's your current Oof. HC right there on the screen. That's my guy. That's my, that's my guy, D.A. Let's go, baby. In my mind. One of these guys got to come come back to to me this year. Yeah, I feel like you've been recruiting guys coming on with us every year. We've got to get you one. Yeah, you know we got we got a dog in Brian Brzee last year. Yep. You know, so why not? It worked out well, so why not double deal? Come on back. Are you a little lighter in the wallet than the last time I saw you? Did you did you do redo your contract? Did I see that? I don't know about lighter, but you know we we have some moved, more wiggle room. Yeah, we move wiggle, wiggle room. However, the chess piece works. You know, like if we what we want is. Uh, a team that will be contending. Okay. And I feel like, you know, when you got you got a guy like, you know, Derek Carr who leads the charge and that Eric McCoy, you just sort of fall in line. You know, you let the cap numbers work however they work because okay. we, need, we need a little bit, you know, more, whatever that is. So they come to you and you're like, all right, let's talk, and you're good with it? Less than talk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, hey, they come my way. Great. Okay. 
let's go get it done. That's not the jacket of a light wallet right there. That's the jacket That's true. of a very heavy wallet. Okay, I understand. I'm headed into year 14. <laughs> Life has been good. Year 14, man. Wow. Yeah. We talk about it every year, but I'm, I, I was still scouting back then. I remember going back there and watching you at Cal, going to that morning practice, watching you run with the skill guys, going, that's not normal uh, to be that big out there running with the DBs. Speaking of guys whose dad played in the league, here's Chris Jenkins. Love a legacy kid. There's a bunch Just of them like in this you. draft, man. I've heard, One of them. I've heard. I started looking into it. I was like, mm, come on. Frat life. Chris Jenkins trying to better that 502. Seems like a better start, right, DJ? Cleaner. It was a cleaner start. Oh, yeah. There you there go. That, that's what the expectation there was there right there. Oh, yeah. There's a there there's he applause is. right up. there. Good All right. Thing. Jim likes it. Last time they were in this building together, they were hosting a trophy for the third straight year in this building. Just pointing out how Chris Jenkins said he felt like this was a home game for him. <laughs> Thank you. Three straight Big Ten championships for Chris Jenkins in Michigan. Hey, you saw that smile. He knew what he did. Oh, yeah. Here's Logan Lee. Stacy Dales, take it away. Well, Rich, I have to imagine with Cam sitting beside you guys, just so special when your father plays so long in the NFL. For Chris Jenkins, we talked to him this week. His dad, Chris, of course, played for the Panthers. His uncle actually played for the Packers. And he just, it was really nostalgic because he can remember being uh, so young, like back to 2005. His best memory was literally standing on the field at Panther Stadium, he said he was about five or six and just watching everything transpire. And that's where the dream sort of started around him. And Cam, I'm sure that was similar for you. Did I see a teammate yeah. for dads out on that's the what field? I saw, I saw Hawk I down there. Uh, you know, John Randall down there is a legendary. Did I see? I thought I saw Randall yeah, he, in he the He looks house. great, man. The dogs are in the house. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Oh, look he out. is one of you, my He can still favorites. play. Yeah, I mean, when, when you grow up watching guys like him, Chris Dolman, you know, back back in the day, Keith Millard, you you want to be a D lineman. No, no offense to Pops, but you don't want to be a tight end when you have a D line like that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's Jason Light of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's got a choice on Baker Mayfield, or a decision or a contract that he's negotiating with him. Everybody keen on that as the new league year is beginning shortly. Right after the combine, he's the Buccaneers general manager right there. Mike Evans uh, decision coming up there as well. I mean, this is going to be interesting offseason. It can't man. be a decision with Mike Evans. He no, but just in terms of they can I, I don't get it understand done. it. Can you get it done? You should get it done. Yes. There's Not a, even out of pure production wise. You should get that done. I'd be scared if he got to the market though because there's a lot of teams with young quarterbacks who, who doesn't want a thousand yard receiver. Give anything to have. Although a guy whenever like Mike that. Evans plays the Saints there's not enough fireworks for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh wait a minute. I'm being told it's the exact <laughs> opposite. Wait a minute. My producers are getting in my ear. <laughs> Here's Zion logo of Georgia. It was whistled on his first attempt of his second run. Oh, Gorsuch. Gorsuch is retired from scouting. I know. He comes back just for this. But not from. He, so he hung up the watch, but not the whistle. Nice. <laughs> All right. So we'll stick with that first time. So what are you looking forward to seeing down there? I mean, I feel like. As a fan, I'm always in, I'm always enjoying the 40 yard, right? You're like, what's his time? And then you know the, the competitor in me is like, mm, let's 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 look at mine versus his, you know. And this <laughs> nice. always gives you you know brings it brings it back. But then when you get down on the field, I want to see fluidity. You talk about the you know, the pass rush shows that have happened. How are they getting through the ball? Like, how, are they leaning right? Are they bending? Are they you know is that is step explosive? And that's what you get excited about. And maybe that's again from a player. But you add them in, that's what you want. So we're looking at DTs in this first group. Then we'll get to the edge guys. But for DTs, I like who's, who's your North Star, though, in terms of what, like, if you're talking about existing guys in the league and say, okay, this is the North Star? You say Chris Jones. Yeah. Big body, mm. disruptive, can hold, you know, can commands two. You're, you're always going to say Aaron Donald in that mm. list. Um, you know, you, you like the big, big Simmons over at, at the Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. Just a monster in the middle. You know, young young Fletcher Cox. You know, mm -hmm. big body has to has to take two, frees up the edge. That's what I was saying about Mississippi State. You just named three of them. They, they've put out some D tackles, man. Absolutely. Fletcher Cox, Simmons, Chris Jones. So I played into your hand. Dang. Yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate Dang. that. That's being a good teammate. Right there. <laughs> 
Well, I, I have a request. I want you to interview John Randall. Absolutely. I need to hear a conversation between you and John Randall. <laughs> Come on, me. Oh, we yeah. Need, we need to listen in on that. I love talking to him. Did you meet him as a as a kid the first? Yeah, absolutely. Did he ever babysit you? Come on, I was I was like four when pops retired. I could not recall, but I, I assume okay. he did not. You don't. I don't. <laughs> that wouldn't have been the first choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just showing up with the eye black and scared the crap. You would never gotten to sleep. Uh, scared sorry. the crap out of you at age four. <laughs> All right, Rook, Rororo. Ro, ro. All right, four nine five. Two great times at that size. He's a big man. Yeah. yeah. For sure, Keith Randolph, Illinois. Stick with that first one there. He's got some good range as a player. All right, Mason Smith. He's intriguing to me. He's one of the few guys that has some real height and length on that interior, and that's a solid time of that size. Tavondre Sweat declined to run it a second time. I'm not looking to get 366 moving that far too many times. I think that's a smart business move. So oh. Leonard Taylor from the U improved his time. And uh, Austin Booker of Kansas is the first edge rusher to run a 40 at the 2024 scouting combine. He's very explosive on tape. Looks like he kind of geared down a little bit as he's running. I'll give you the times here, Rich, we're looking for. If you look at the top ten um, sack artists this past season, the edge rushers, they were 6'4 and a quarter, 258 pounds on average. The ten time, again, which is crucial here, is 160 on average with a 46240. So the guys who are really getting after the quarterback can roll. Miles Cole, Texas Tech. Miles Cole, he'll play outside with his hand up as well as he'll get down. Um, he can hold the point of attack. Thought he had a little bit of power, just played a little bit too high. That's something that he can work on. Um, an interesting player. Six foot six, 278 pounds. Mike McDaniel of the Miami Dolphins. You're cool. Playoffs. Is that a fur? Is it fur on years. the collar? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's stylish because it's Mike McDaniel. <laughs> That's right, Mike. I'm just wondering, if the, are the pants capri as I well? I just want to see the, the shoes. Are there, are there, how, how are the shoes? Yeah, I know. He, I, stop it. We're not does, stopping it. Ask Patrick Mahomes way, no, what happens when you ask us to stop it. I, <laughs> I think that's a Taylor Swift reference to get off screen. I think that's what he's. Oh, that, there you go. Yeah. I think that's what that was. So I'm, I'm picking up what he's putting down. Miles Cole. Oh. That was explosive. That's a big dude, too. Miles Cole, again, 6'6", 278 pounds, 4'6", 9". Wow. That is dynamic. And he's back. There we go. <laughs> I mean, our truck is getting They're very open. cheeky. Like yeah. Mahomes says, don't show my 40. They sh the first simulcam is him versus two defensive linemen. Coach says, stop. We go back. They're not going to be bullied, Rich. They're not. Jalex Hunt. From uh, Houston Christian Husky. DL34. He really runs up on his toes when you watch him play. It's kind of unique. He'll really get up on his toes and go. There he goes. One, six, ten time and a yeah. four, six, four, forty. Nicely, Tom. Adisa Isaac is now up here, Charles. Yeah, and we, you know, we're obviously Chop Robinson is the feature attraction at Penn State, but we've had these pass rushers, DJ, coming out of the Nittany Lion camp for a while now that for whatever reason, extremely athletic, potential off the charts, the numbers don't really show it at Penn State. But Isaac took advantage of Chop Robinson, all the attention he had, 16 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks. He's a guy that we saw at the Senior Bowl, and he gets overlooked at times, but he definitely has the potential to be a good player in the NFL. From Brooklyn, New York, Canarsie High School, with a 4.75 at the Combine. 
he beats up on tight ends, you know, kind of go off what Charles was saying there. And he's got a really good feel when tackles kind of overset, get out a little too wide. He's got a really good feel, get underneath him and, and win that way. Brennan Jackson. Of the pack two. He did a nice job against Morgan. The tackle we're going to see from Arizona. Um, he held up quite well against him. Flash a little bit of a bull rush. Nice split. Nice time. I wore seven flat. Six oh uh, four three so six four and, and three eighths, two hundred forty seven pounds. Oh, sorry, he was uh, 6037, 264. That's Brandon Jackson there. Talked about what he did against Morgan from Arizona. Brandon Bean with the soundbite already of the combine where he talked about trading up for Josh Allen. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to get fired. If it works out, nobody's going to give a you know what. Correct. That is uh, that's a soundbite of the combine. Javante Jean Baptiste of Notre Dame. He's supposed to test well. Curious to see him run here. Plays with a lot of effort. I think he was super bendy, but I thought he was twitchy. I thought he had some real burst. Let's see him get out. Strider, kind of striding out. Mm. Four six six. Yep. Running up right. He closes like you'll see his closing burst, chasing plays. He can really cover a lot of ground. Spent his first four years of. College eligibility at Ohio State. Finished up at Notre Dame. And he's just off the pace of Jalex Hunt. Here's Elliot Wolf, the new grocery shopper, I guess is the phrase you need to use when you're talking <laughs> about there. the Patriots. Yeah. Director of Scouting is his title. Good for him. He's been at it a long time. Give a shout out to Bill Belichick if he's out there right now. Not at the combine for the first time in a long time. Trajan Jeffcoat, Arkansas Razorback. Belichick set a record last year with his 49th consecutive season on an NFL sideline as an Jeez. assistant or a head coach. So we say hello to Bill. Also no. a proponent of Fred the Sled, I might add. Is that right? Remember when he came up here? I remember when you called the, when you, when you, the sled and you were calling him Fred, and I, I needed to be sold on that. Yeah. And I, I went to the, I went to the top you. of the food chain. Pushing back at you, and then he, Belichick liked it. You just, the look <laughs> you gave me, it's just like you're so pleased with yourself. Uh, Cedric Johnson of Ole Miss. Four six four. I believe we've got a new. And I, again, I go back to that 10 neighbor time. Neighbor for Hunt there. That four, 10 time for Hunt is a, is a 1 6 0. Oh. Mm. So. That's the number that you're after. Mohamed Camaro. He's a good player. He's got some, he's got a bunch of production, and uh, he is a rugged, rugged player. He was a fun one to watch. Mo Camaro? Yes. Of Colorado State. He's got, again, talk about effort and chase, playing with leverage. You know, he's just got a real toughness to him. He's not the tallest guy in the world. He's just under 6'2", but uh, he knows how to rush. Very productive. Wildest games of the year, Colorado State against there Colorado with a, the best run we've seen today. CD, are you, are you still with us? Have you uh, had a chance to look at Kamara? I, he's, yeah. he's a favorite of mine. I like the way he plays. And it's understandable <laughs> because I think you're talking about the motor that you're seeing and you're seeing the guy. Look at that physique. And I think he can throw a few extra things in there as well. I don't think he's a one-trick pony, DJ, from what I was watching. And he's giving people a lot of trouble. Marshawn Neeland of Western Michigan. He reminded me of Tuli Tui Pelotu. A chance to see a lot with the Chargers. That's a, that's a solid time. He, again, used the word rugged. Hit, that shows up a bunch when you watch him. He just beats tackles up. Okay. Here is the 20th. Look at Marvin Lewis is back here at a combine. Good to see Marvin. Putting Marvin on this case. Marvin and Ozzy have Raiders. been watching workouts about that? together for a long time. Eric DaCosta up there. This is number 20 on the list here of your top 50. He's the most skilled edge rusher in the draft. I mean, in terms of all the different tricks in his bag, the hands, 
The ability to, to flatten at the top. He stumbled a little bit right there. They ought to, lot to. Still got out. So you're saying Marvin Lewis is in the Ravens booth? Correct. Because way back in the day, he was the DC of one of the greatest defenses of all time. So he goes back with Ozzy and forever. And they and usually obviously Eric DeCosta, and there they are. Yeah, before they got a chance, everybody got to get cozy in the suites. They would be perched up at the top of, right. uh, of the stadium together. Sure. And I just remember the first combine we ever covered in the RCA Dome as we're seeing Chop Robinson here at the 40-yard dash line at the start was Al Davis, Bill Parcells. And uh, Gil Brandt would Gil go down Brandt, there. Yeah. The three of them. They were the, they, those were their seats at the RCA Dome. <laughs> and, the you know, people would go up and, okay. you, went quick on you know, pay some fealty, but then Thanks, get man. out. Yeah, the three of them were just you're, not, you're not welcome to stay. You can, There's a you Parcells can the acolyte right there and Sean Payton. They were at the, they were at, that was their, those were their three seats. Forever. Yeah, right at the start of the 40. Uh, Rich, I don't know if you have a seat belt, but you might want to put it on. For Chop? For Chop Robinson. Okay, the next two Robinsons. Here we go. Nice split. Nice 40. Four, four, nine. Hey, now. That was the, the expectation, the hope he could get under 4-5, and here he is. He's done it, and that shows you some rare explosiveness for an edge rusher. They work on their quads at Penn State, huh? Yeah, they squat a little bit up there. <laughs> Turn, turns out that's the way they do it. Saquon and company. Quadzilla. It's another great athlete here. Darius Robinson of Mizzou. He played inside his first three years and was a, a solid player. They kicked him outside, and his play just took off. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a captain there. He's a leader there. Coach Drinkwitz, their head coach, said he would organize workouts on Friday nights at 10 p.m. in the indoor facility and would get a bunch of guys in there to work out. And not a mystery that Missouri had the year they had. And we just saw a sub phone four five from an Rolling. Edge. Ian, you have the floor. Rich, this is not only time for guys to run in front of all of us. It's also a time for players to meet with teams. And Darius Robinson has met with 18, 18 teams. That might be the wow. most I have ever heard. And maybe most interesting, the Detroit Lions. The reason I say that, that is him. That is his mom, by the way, tweeting out this old picture. I'm, I'm almost positive that's Nick Fairley. Is that, that is right? That is Nick Fairley. Okay. So that is him, Darius Robinson, a hardcore Lions fan. From Southfield, Michigan, getting the autograph of Nick Fairley. His heart was pumping, walking into the meeting with the Detroit Lions. will be interesting to see if they, drafting late in the first round, get another big-time hometown talent. Awesome. 18 teams. One team per Wolverine that's here. At the uh -huh, nice, nice. 23. 23 minutes. Got it. Yeah. If you go more I'm than 30 slowing minutes. My pace. I'm slowing my pace. <laughs> Slowing my pace. How about production uh, with this guy right here in Solomon? 16 sacks, 18 tackles for loss. Played some of that three-man front. And uh, when they let him widen out, he is really productive when they give him a little bit of a runway. 4-8-1 for the Troy Trojan. Obviously, Troy, you know, sending to Marcus Ware into the NFL. OCU Minura as well. Stacey Dales, take it away. Yeah, guys, we watched the other Robinson, Chop Robinson, uh, just run that unofficial 449. He told me this week that he was going to put on a show. Uh, so we'll see how he does throughout the day. But he wanted a 44 in the 40. He wanted to show his get off. Hmm. But I found it to be interesting because his original name when he was born was Pork Chop Robinson because he was 14 pounds when he was born. <laughs> so they dropped the pork and, well, I mean, obviously the chop has has been standing for his entire life. But, uh, guys, he was flying there. His real name, Damien Robinson. Pork God, Chop God, comes. God, God bless his mother. Four, did you say 14 pounds? <laughs> Holy moly. Xavier Thomas has been whistled twice. 
defensive player, watch the ball, right? The ball moves, you go. I feel like he's been ball, at Clemson ball, forever. Ball a big time recruit. We got more guys. He's going to be 24 in September. This mm -hmm. draft, because you know, a lot of these guys got their 60 year, we have more you know, 24 year olds than I can ever Because of COVID remember. you're talking about? Correct. Mm -hmm. Picking him up and putting him down. Four six three. Yeah, he's intriguing. I mean, th th he's doesn't have a ton of production. He had three sacks, but you see the explosiveness. You see some of the tenacity with his effort. He can get speed to power. He can bend a little bit. You know, as a five-star recruit, he's going to get an opportunity, to show what he can do at the next level. This this one right here, uh, CD. If you're if you're still there, Braylon Trice, from what he weighed and what I was told he was weighing during the fall, he has cut significant weight here. Uh, and I would imagine that's so that he can run well. <laughs> that's not something we haven't seen before, correct? Come here, cut the weight, try and blow up this big four. Because remember, as you well know, he's trying to get in a, on your list, DJ. He wants to be up there with the Turners and the other crew. He thinks he belongs there, and this is one way he's trying to get your attention. Yeah, he's really productive. He, his ability is kind of to pry a shoulder open. He doesn't really work with your chest, but he's really good just kind of getting half a man and working and prying through that shoulder. He can dip under blocks. It's got some quickness. I didn't think he was super bendy, and I was curious just how explosive and dynamic he was going to be, but that's a solid time. Braden Fisk had a terrific day in the first group of defensive linemen. Now here's his teammate, Jared Verse, in the second group of defensive linemen. Verse is 14th on Daniel Jeremiah's top 50 prospects. There you go, four six flat. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what the numbers look like with him and Will Anderson when it's all said and done, because as players, they are eerily similar. Will Anderson also ran a four six flat, by the way. Uh, there you go. There's your comp. So and check I, a box. yeah, we, we have the uh, and we'll have Jack pull, pull it, but like the size, the the height, the weight, they're just they're bullies how they play. Oh, there we go. We had nicely done. See, the truck listens when you talk, you know. I mean, that's a DNA match, Rich. That's what's so fun about the combine, One man. One pound off, just a, less than an, an inch of arm length. Eric Watts wrapping up the first run of 40s. And Booker. And have a little. Jayhawk, 481 and 480. That's I was going to say. I thought it'd be a little faster. Maybe nice. more than just a little. But better run. This was an impressive hey. run. The Miles first time. Cole. <laughs> Even more impressive. Four, six, seven. Chop Robinson. Dude's almost 280 pounds, Rich. His teammate, Adisa Isaac. It's a clean run. And a little cleaner. Again, Chop Robinson with a 4-4-9 earlier. Wondering if he's just going to rest on that, try to break it. Brennan Jackson, Cougar. Yeah, nice. Those are two good times. 264 pounds. Jeff Jeffcoat. Good start. You got out clean. Suey. A little better. Okay. Cedric Johnson. Ole Miss. Not a lot of slow times out here. No. They get faster every year and the players get bigger. You sure you want to wait till the Rose Bowl, Rich? Uh, I plan on it, sir. It's definitely not the track. I think it's operator uh, issues. <laughs> Mo Camaro. He had the fastest time for about five minutes before Chop Robinson got up there. That's a heck of a time. Four, five, eight. I, I, the first time I saw him was on TV and watching Prime. I mean, those, those but, Colorado but games game, were must-see TV. Well, and that, season. that game in particular was with intense. The, with the lead up over the blender shades and that, you know. Six, five. That's an unbelievable time, but we'll stick with the four, five, eight. By the way, I, I think uh, Cam Jordan referred to Dion Prime as the rain of fast time and then left. Dion denies that happened. That What's his story? Not, well, his story is that he stayed at the combine. The yeah. story is that he ran a fast 40, ran through the tunnel and got into a waiting car. He said that did not happen. 
the tail has grown. A little Stayed bit around years. to do the other interviews, but not with teams that uh, were picking lower than fifth overall. Look at the ground he's covering there. That stride. Talk about edge rushers want to eat up ground. He did not not little choppy steps there. He got out. All right, here's Leatu Latu. Charles. Hey, DJ, with Marshawn Neeland, yes, you sir. talked about him coming to the Senior Bowl, and we were watching, and we saw the power. That was evident right out of the gate. Doesn't take long. Did you see a little bit more in his arsenal there? Because I thought that he showed us a few more moves than maybe we suspected he had coming to, uh, coming to Mobile. Yeah, I go through my notes, CD, the rip move. You got to get skinny. You know, I still think his game is going to be more about violence and ruggedness. Yes, yes. But he's, he's more skilled. As... He, he tried to show us something there in Mobile, didn't he? Although when push came to shove, he just beat people up. No doubt. That's, that's ace in the test right there for Latu. I mean, the tape is so good. And now he's put together some some explosive numbers, some explosive times testing. Really, the medical rich with him is going to kind of determine everything. If he if he comes through that clean, um, I, man, he would it would not surprise me if Latu was like a top 12, top 14 type player. He's got that type of ability. Well, Robinson's running a second half just got chopped in half. His chop is like, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Four four nine's good. Let's see if Darius can. Better his first time. Probably just inquired on what the second number was, and when he heard four, he said, We'll see you on the field. I uh, would love for that to be the official time for him. Big Darius here. He's got, you know, body type. I'm anxious to see him stand next to Cam on the field because body type wise, Darius Robinson is similar to Cam Jordan. He didn't hold his arm long enough. They want Mark wants a, a pause when you lift your arm. As Brian Dable, coach of the year, once removed. The Giants with the sixth overall pick. A lot of chatter about them being in the quarterback market for Detroit, potentially even moving up for one. Daniel Jones coming back off an injury marred season. You could also say just in a marred season, you know, the exception of the second half in Arizona early on in the season, he didn't look anything like that quarterback no. that bounced Minnesota one and done. The Got Vikings himself a new contract to go and right. that was going to take off and, and really go and just didn't happen. Looked nothing like it this year. First time if these are official. Usually when you hear that that kind of grunting, you're straining a little bit too much, you're not relaxed, you're not gonna run quite as fast. It's the Monica Sellis rule, Rich. You want to just relax. And I guess, well, we, we had Fisk. Like, Fisk we, gave us an oh yeah. He though. gave us an oh that's the opposite of the oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You think about production. How about Solomon here with 49 and a half career tackles for loss and 33 sacks. Mm -hmm. He's another one who's going to be he'll be uh, he'll be 23. So he'll be 23 in the fall. Yeah, he's easier. Better time yeah, he's relaxed. He's got the most impressive biceps of the day too. Goodness gracious. Xavier Thomas. I saw Xavier Thomas at a uh, at a high school event up in uh, up in uh, Oregon, mm -hmm. and uh, he looked like he looked like he'd been in college for three years as an 18 year old. He looked just like this. What a nice run that was. Uh, uh, hopefully he's all right. He's all right. Oh boy. So. Trainers are going out to him right now as we speak. Braylon Trice. Trice coming off a uh, seven sack season at nine and 22. CD talked about the production. 18 career sacks, 28 and a half tackles for loss. There's a lot of Huskies here too now. Four, seven, five. 
I think for what expectations were, I think he's going to be really pleased. I think teams will be pleased. Again, the body composition is, is really different than what I expected. Lean. I don't understand the way you said it. What do you mean in Washington? There's a lot of Huskies here now. What do you mean by well, I mean, I, well, you know, the you school you went to, we've discussed a few times, a few dozen. And then uh, Washington oh, has. You brought a, it up. You brought it up now. <laughs> You're the one who brought it up. Washington is well represented here. I know. Good for them. It's good. We're on the same page. Get feisty in group two. We got a long way to go. <laughs> feisty in group two. I didn't know that Jared Verse would run again. He must want to try and get down the four fives. I, I might have posted that four six and been good. There it is. You know, every one hundredth of a second. Hey counts. now, Daniel. I love it. There's John Lynch. Is that Frank Gore? It is Frank Gore. Yeah. Have Frank Gore in the house. That would be a big time collision right there. You think? It's, oh, by the way, that's right. <laughs> Certainly with Lynch coming from way back. Mm -hmm. Coming in. I don't think either one of them would avoid it either. I bet. Eric Watts. It's pretty crazy that how athletic these guys get is mm -hmm. that four, six, eight it is kind of middle of the pack with what we've seen today. It's incredible. So those are the defensive line 40s. We've got the linebackers still to come.